Hey up everybody, uh, I'm on part 3 of my riding car or riding truck or riding trolley whichever you want to call it, people call them different things so I'm on part 3 and in part 2 you'll have seen where I made the frame the main frame so in this part then I'm just going to cover the wheels and the suspension units ok then let's have a quick look at it on the on the riding car I've already made uh, I think in a part one when I did the overview I said the wheels were four and four and a half uh, that's actually wrong that I was getting mixed up with my loco that I've just built they actually three and five eighth diameter on the tread it's not critical that you can make them uh, to whatever you want really as long as you just adjust everything else to suit so they actually three and five eighths on the tread um, I'll deal with the axles today as well, that's just straightforward and the suspension units I've fabricated these from a tubing and a solid boss in the middle for the bearing housing so we'll deal with that then there's the tie rod that holds the suspension on that's this one that goes right through each suspension unit where it pivots and then you've got the spring on the other side I'm over on my Harrison lathe now and what I'm doing I'm making my, my wheels out of some re old reclaim wheels where the flanges have broke uh, what I'm going to do here I'm going to direct you to another video when I did my um, meter made loco to explain exactly more in complete detail of how I did my, my wheels and how I'll be doing these wheels but just briefly how I do it, I, I put a, a jig in my forge your chuck with a spigot on that's running, you know, dead true. It's got a tapped hole up the middle so I can locate my wheels on and off this jig for accuracy to do different and varied operations. So I can do one operation to all my wheels all at the, you know, all, all at one setting. Take a look back at my loco video then for me uh, beginner's loco, how to make a beginner's loco and I'll put a link up here and uh, follow that follow them videos if you're not sure. got the axles and the wheels completed now um, what I've done with the axles is just simply turn the ends down to suit whatever bearings you're using and in my case the bore of the bearing is 15 millimeter so you can use any size bearing that you've got that's similar to that or you could even use um, put brass or bronze bushes in <clears throat> and I've turned the middle down just to lighten it because I used thicker material than I needed so what happens with the wheels then I've got one wheel with a that's just bored out to fit on the axle and that one's going to be locked tighted solid onto the axle but the other wheel has got a bronze bush in because this wheel is going to run independently on its own to the axle and the reason for that is when you're going round a curve the outside wheel always travels faster than the inside so one's got to run independently uh, I suppose it's like a differential on a car and then the suspension boss that's where the, the axle is going to come through so I'll, I'll explain these in a minute right onto the suspension arms then just to give you an idea of what, what's involved 
and I'm fabricating mine. So I've got these three quarter, this three quarter tubing cut. Uh, one's two inch, one's inch and a half. As per this one, although I've cut these off a little bit shorter because I wasn't sure where I was going to put the spring when I made this one, but it's not needed any longer than that. And that's going to be welded onto that boss in the central position. So this side's welded on uh, horizontally to the centre line and this side's welded on at an angle between 13 and 14 degrees that angle from the horizontal so I'm going to machine, machine out for the bearing I've not put no sizes on that because it'll de depend what bearings you're using or whether you're using brass or bronze bushes um, same with that hole there, that's the clearance for the axle. The two inch diameter by one inch long. So I'm going to go ahead now and bore those out for my bearings. I'm now ready for welding the suspension uh, housings to the arms. And what I've done here, I've just made a simple wooden jig so I can get every one uh, at the correct angle of 13 degrees and this one horizontal. So there'll be two done that way round because they're, they're handed these. So these are for the right hand side or off side and then when I do the others, the other two, it'll be this side facing upwards to make them left handed. Okay then I've managed to get the suspension units completed now. I've done a few extra jobs on these which I'll explain, it's just a little bit of drilling and, a, and an extra bracket. I'll explain everything uh, before I proceed any further. So, first of all then, I've drilled a clearance hole for an M6 bolt. This is on the short side where the spring fits. I've gone through with a, a 6mm hole clearance for M6 and I've counterboard it on the other side where the nut comes through and I've done it uh, relevant to my socket size for an M6 nut so I can get my socket inside to tighten the nut up so uh, and the, the position of that is inch and seven eighths from the centre Then on the other side, I've drilled through for the uh, pivot tie rods on both, which go straight through the riding car. Mine's 3 8 diameter, because I'm using 3 8 uh, mile steel rod. If you're using 10mm, you'll have to drill them, obviously, 10mm. So that's that's that one, and that, that's that position of that is... <clears throat> Two and three quarter from the centre line on the longer arm, um, and then I've put this bracket on. This is for the um, the brake rod pivot, and all that is it's the, it's this drawer in here. It's the brake pivot bracket. It's quarter thick material or 6mm, 3 quarter wide, 
inch and seven sixteenths long and there's a hole in the centre inch and three sixteenths from this end. The position you weld that bracket on is two and five sixteenths from the centre to the centre of the bracket. <clears throat> and then the other thing I've done is drill two holes in the bear where the bearing fits, three sixteenths diameter just to get a punch in to punch the bearing out if need be in future. I've also made the uh, pivot tie rods from 3 8 diameter mild steel 10 inches long I've put a thread on to suit whatever nut you to suit whatever nuts you're using in my case I'm using uh, 3 8 BSW 15 millimeter or 5 8 on each end and there's two of those so here's a list of all the miscellaneous items that you need the other thing I've made is these four thrust thrust washers just out of some brass, they're inch diameter and the bore is the same as my bearings which is 15mm so if you use different bearings use different size hole for your thrust washer and they're 7mm thick and they're just to take the play up in the wheels between the suspension and the wheels it'll all become clear as I assemble it. Your four M6 cap head screws they're going to fit this way into the suspension through the frame through the suspension arm and then you get your nut on from the inside with your socket So the only other job I've done while I've been uh, off camera is put the four holes in the frame. Two at the front and two at the rear. Now I've left them till the last because you've got to put your suspension arms on to get your position of those. For example, you put your, t your pivot rod through the suspension on both sides just offer your spring into the suspension arm in the where the hole position is central over the hole then you can just offer your suspension up to the frame and put a mark on where you need to drill through the frame and then what you do with the with the hole in the frame you're going to drill it for M6 clearance for these cap head screws so I'll go through with a 6mm drill and then you counterbore it on the opposite side to the same diameter as the head of the cap head so that the cap head screw drops in that's to locate the keep the spring in position so then you'll have two locking nuts using your socket to tighten up. I'm ready now to fit the bearings into the uh, suspension units and once I've got those fitted in uh, I'll show you how it all assembles together.
Okay, then that's all the wheels, the suspension units, and the axles, and the uh, pivot, suspension pivot bars completed. I'll call that a day for this part, part three, and in the, in the next part, part four, I'll deal with the braking system. So, I'm going to sign off for now then. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you up next video. Bye for now.